Greetings to you all. So this is, uh, my name is Diana Wolf. This is the last of a series of lectures. Um, this is, the title of this lecture is The Atypical Presentation and Eclampsia. And just of note, it is thought, it's proposed, although we don't really know exactly what the pathophysiology is of preeclampsia, and there are several theories, it's thought that, the, that we don't, that this may be a separate pathophysiology explaining this atypical presentation and eclampsia. So here we go. Our learning objectives are one, to know that there is an atypical presentation of disease. Two, to know the differential diagnosis of an early presentation of disease. Three, to know the potential maternal and fetal complications of severe disease. And lastly, to know the possible atypical presentations. So how do you define atypical preeclampsia and eclampsia? It can present at a very early gestation, although rare, sometimes less than 20 weeks, and sometimes even between 20 and 28 weeks. Also, it can present postpartum, greater than 48 hours postpartum, up to as long as four weeks postpartum. There's a lot of debate as to really if a patient seizes six weeks after they gave delivery, was that really a postpartum preeclamptic seizure or is it something else? So there's a lot of debate as to how far out you can go to really attribute the seizure to this disease. So there's a lot that we still have to learn, but it's good to be aware of all of these possibilities with your patients. So prior to 20 weeks, what would you, if your patient showed up with the signs and symptoms of preeclampsia and you knew that the patient was less than 20 weeks pregnant, what else are you thinking about? Really jog your mind. So you must be thinking about a molar pregnancy, a drug use or withdrawal, a chromosomal abnormality like a trisomy, renal disease or chronic hypertension. So what are you going to do next? You better do an ultrasound to see if, if it hasn't already been done to at least exclude things like a molar pregnancy or you may have sonographic signs that lead you to think that there's a trisomy. Now, this uh, here shows the maternal and fetal complications of severe preeclampsia. We've already gone over this in previous lectures, but it's just to remind you that certain com maternal complications include abruption of the placenta, DIC, especially with HELP syndrome, pulmonary edema, acute renal failure, eclampsia, liver failure or hemorrhage, stroke, death, and long-term cardiovascular morbidity. By the way, it's been shown that patients who seize, who have eclampsia, often end up having cardiovascular morbidity, unfortunately. Neonatal complications include preterm delivery, fetal growth restriction, hypoxia, neurologic injury, perinatal death, and long-term cardiovascular morbidity associated with low birth weight. That's a totally different subject, but it's good to know that growth-restricted babies lead to problems of the, um, in the adult life, such as obesity, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, and renal disease. Um, okay, so I just want to show you, this is a slide from a study that was done in the U.S., and it just, it's very interesting. What I, the point that I want to make here is if you look at perinatal death in the last row, the risk is similar in the severe preeclamptics and the severe hypertensive patients. What does that tell you? That tells you that, that goes back to our new definition of preeclampsia without, pro, that you don't need proteinuria to make, to have a severe disease causing perinatal death. So keep that in mind. This is a MRI showing the hemorrhage and the posterior aspect of the brain um, from somebody who had an eclamptic seizure. And here we have more um, pictures of intracranial hemorrhage. Uh, this, these are very, very bad outcomes and we really need to work hard to prevent these things. This is what we don't wanna see. This is a uh, hemorrhage in the liver. And here we have a post-mortem brain of a patient who had an eclamptic seizure. Now, what is, so what's the epidemiology of atypical eclampsia? So there's been a couple of studies that I've listed here who've shown, that have shown a rise in late postpartum eclampsia. So you ask yourself, what's going on in the environment that we're having all these late postpartum eclampsias? 
it's not really that we're having new cases. What it is is that we're actually getting much better at treating the intrapartum and the antepartum preeclamptics so that we prevent eclampsia. So now our next challenge is to really try to prevent the postpartum eclamptics, and that's a big challenge. Here is another study that you can read on your own, but basically um, what it showed is the factors associated with postpartum eclampsia are different than those associated with the antepartum and intrapartum disease. So I invite all of you to think about in your populations if you also see that trend that has been reported in the U United Kingdom and the United States. So we can work together to try to solve this puzzle. Now, the incidence of atypical uh, eclampsia has been reported in mostly in the United States and the United Kingdom, but also in Colombia and Singapore. And I invite you to try to assess the incidence in your country so you can contribute to the literature here. And we can, like I said, work together to solve these problems. Now this is a list of a the atypical presentation and pretty much it lists things that have already been said in previous lectures but I'll just go over, over them. It includes hemolysis, thrombocytopenia, elevated liver function tests, gestational proteinuria, hemolysis, thrombocytopenia, and early signs. You can look at this on your own because it's already been presented. And also, this is from an article written by Dr. Sabai, who is very much of a leader in this subject. And he talks, he proposes that we have to think about a capillary leak syndrome, where you see facial edema, edema ascites and pulmonary edema with gestational proteinuria. He states here, hypertension is considered to be the hallmark for the diagnosis of preeclampsia. However, Recent evidence suggests that in some patients with preeclampsia, the disease may manifest itself in the form of either a capillary leak, excessive weight gain, or a spectrum of abnormal hemostasis with multi-organ dysfunction. These patients usually experience clinical manifestations of atypical preeclampsia. So keep that in mind. This is just listing what he was stated there with or without hypertension, you want to evaluate for platelet, liver enzyme, and renal abnormalities, and investigate for other symptoms of preeclampsia. So this, is a design, this was designed by Dr. Sabai, and the article is cited there if you want to look at it yourself. But he's basically listing here that you have an interface of blood pressure, capillary leak, symptoms, symptoms and also fibrinolysis and hemolysis, and you have to think that not every preeclamptic patient is going to have all of these circles. Two circles may be overlapped and you have the same disease, but it may be atypical. So don't forget your differential diagnosis of eclampsia, which includes cerebrovascular accidents, hypertensive encephalopathy, seizure disorders, undiagnosed brain tumors, etc. This is an um, image of a patient who had an eclamptic seizure with PRESS syndrome. That's posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. This um, is a, an article that studied emergency room doctors who had to deal with postpartum eclamptics. So where I come from in the US, many times the late postpartum preeclamptic patients sees because the emergency room doctors aren't aware of the disease. So I encourage you and your population to really sensitize people working in the emergency area to know that this is a possibility and they should have magnesium sulfate and your calcium gluconate, of course, just in case you have to deal with overdose, ready available for these cases. What they reported a case of a lady uh, postpartum day eight who seized and what they concluded is that it's important for other specialties to recognize women at risk for late postpartum preeclampsia and eclampsia and mag sulfate may not be stocked in your emergency department. This is in the United States so see what it is in your country. And thank you very much. This is a picture from a rural village in uh, Mali, West Africa. 
and um, I'm sure that in the various countries where you come from, you also see that uh, the problems often originate in the rural parts that we really need to address these issues of hypertension and pregnancy and reach out to these areas. Thank you very much.